You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. What's up, family? Did you miss me? That's right, it's me, Jerry Royce Live Worldwide, aka the Batman is back. Friday night, late night. That's right, with Paula G, the voice. And the Christian Party Line coming up at 1215 following this program. And we appreciate everybody. Thank you, thank you for joining us. We know it's late, but we know you come to hear something special. And we got our special guest. You know him. He called himself the Karim, a.k.a. Dwayne Culpepper, president and CEO of his own record label. That's right. Let's give him some hand claps. Wayne Culpepper in the house And he has a mystery guest Which he's going to introduce shortly So stand by everybody While we hear this song By the king himself The Corinth The Wayne Culpepper They call you is what you answer to. Let's go. I was a fiend, huh? Before I became a king, not gonna make news for people and above all other things. I was originated y'all and called to his purpose. The devil's plan is to destroy me and keep me from searching. The God be the glory molding me. I'm built this way now. A priest to curse the devil's minions. I better know how. He said and she says the worst day pierced to my bone. Break me as he remake me, even by sticks and stones. Can we get along? I'm going home as I walk these streets. You can sack my second life. There's nothing you can call me except for. Welcome to Late Night with Jerry Voice Live and yours truly, Paula G, right here on PositivePower21.org. I'm so glad that you all have joined us this evening slash this morning because, as always, we have a powerful, powerful show for you all this evening. Shout out to all the other podcasters and independent artists right here on Positive Power 21. And as always, much love and appreciation to our CEO. He's there in the background. I think he's in the background. (laughs) Jerry (laughs) Roy. He he had a vision, and he made that vision a reality, and that's why we are all here this evening, including my brother who is with me, Dwayne Culpepper, a.k.a. The Correct. How are you, my brother? I'm good. I can't complain. Thank you for having me yet again. You know, we family. <laughs> we are family. We are family. And you've been a busy man since the last time we had a conversation. What's going on? 
Oh, there's so much going on right now. I can't even complain. And, you know, it's like, you know, everything that's going on, I asked for it. But I, mm-hmm. I never knew I never knew how God was going to give it to me, how he was going to do it. I just, you know, went with the flow and, and did everything that I was supposed to do. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a lot of hardships along the way, you know, losing people, you know, keeping people, finding people, um, going to school, learning, studying. It was so much so, you know. I'm at the point now where all the hard work and going to classes and going to school and everything, it paid off. So I'm grateful to be in this point, at this point in my life and my career to be able to help other people. And, you know, all, all, all of our journeys, as we take our journeys through life, every single thing, you know, points toward, you know, what it is that God wants us to do and what it is that he's destined us to do. So, you know, every trial and tribulation along the way and setback, there's something in those experiences that, you know, will help propel us to where it is that that he wants us to be. You you got some new projects on the table? Yeah, a whole lot of stuff Uh going on. Uh Uh New artists, yeah. Yeah, I gotta I gotta keep those a secret right now. They on the horizon, you know. I gotta keep them. Yeah, I talked to them today, so they they mm-hmm. definitely gearing up for. Um, it's a, but you know the good part I like about it is that I may not be the wealthiest man in the world. Yeah, but I'm well, but I'm wealthy in knowledge and and with the things that God has blessed uh, mm-hmm. my ministry with, we're able to do a little bit more. You know, along with someone that's that's. You know, praying. One of the artists, he actually mm-hmm. told me, he said, "Man, I was just praying," and he said, "I was just praying," and now me and you talking. I'm like, oh "My bro, that's what? probably how God, how God does it." You know? Yes, yeah. And you know, you create. Cause I've spoken to some of your artists on uh, past shows, mm-hmm. and you know, I've I've listened to them, and they all just speak so highly of the family atmosphere that, that you create within your camp and, and just the support and the encouragement and the knowing that you've got everybody's back and they've got your back and, you know, y'all mm-hmm. riding shotgun together. So that's, that's a beautiful, beautiful, you know, work environment, if you will. You know, we all, we all strive for that kind of work environment where we know that, you know, we've got each other's back and we're there for each other to help each other to, and we're all moving in the same direction. You know, we all have the same vision and we all understand what the purpose is and what the goal is and what the focus is and what the vision is and who it is for, Mm -hmm. you know, so uh, that makes it that much, that much grander, that makes it that much grander. Now, you have a special guest with you this evening. we got a mystery guest with us this evening. Yeah, this this, oh. this, this, this is one of my biggest homies, my one of my good friends. Um, we uh, had a conversation a few months back, and, mm-hmm. you know, I, you know, when CMG started uh, years, a, couple, a few years back, we had um, a booking agency, you know, and we, it was going so fast to where we didn't have the staffing to do the things we needed to do for everybody that wanted to be um, a part of the team. So um, when I reached out to this person, we had a conversation, and the conversation that we had led to, um, I said, you know, I told her, I said, I'm going to open the agency back up, but I'm going to do it because of the fact that I know what God wants me to do, and I know I can do this for you. And we just talked a little bit more and we shook up a great friendship and everything now we're partners and she's one of the she's one of the first ministers uh besides laura charles that's been with us for a couple of couple of years now but one of the first ministers that we're actually partnering with we're working with her to um push to uh push her scare uh push her schedule you mm-hmm. know or anything um and we're working with her. She has a talk show. I'm I'm not gonna reveal all the surprises. I'm gonna let her tell it for you. Her it's Minister Jacqueline Williams and I think you're gonna be blessed by what the woman of God is gonna share with you. Minister Jacqueline Williams, welcome to Late Night Radio on Positive Power Twenty One. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I am wonderful. I'm just glad to be able to breathe. This pollen has been killing me. I'm just I'm just happy to breathe. 
Amen. I they say, know. They say yes. breathing is fundamental. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> we'll share. Oh, that is what, and we're so fortunate to have you. We're so excited to have you this evening. So tell us a little bit about Minister Jackie. <laughs> um, I'm Minister Jacqueline Williams. I hail from the great state of South Carolina, a little small town All right, in now. Georgetown. All and right, now. Nestled in between Charleston and uh, Myrtle Beach, we're a seaport city. Mm. Um, and uh, our, you know, my ministry, I launched my ministry about two years ago. Um, I started preaching before then, but... Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of my personal ministry, Jacqueline Williams Ministry, we launched about two years ago, and um, our the basis of our ministry is really outreach. Uh, we just believe that we have to be beyond the four walls of the church. We understand that the church has its place. We know what the church is designed for, but then we also understand what the mandate is, and the mandate calls for us to go, to go out, you know, and to seek lost souls for Christ. And so our main focus is the outreach component, being out, you know, moving around um, from state to state, uh, wherever God leads and wherever he opens the door, um, to not only bring the word to those that are already saved and in the household of faith, but to bring the word to those that truly, truly need it, those that are lost and those that are searching for Christ. So, um, you know, we've added a couple of different dynamics since the ministry has started um, as Corinth you know, alluded to just a minute ago, um, but we're 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 blessed, you know, for what the Lord has done, what He is doing, and um, opening doors such as the one with Corinth, you know, where we can partner with some really strong folks in the faith and continue to do the work that God has assigned us to do. So, yeah, so we're we're happy, we're pleased. Wow. <laughs> Are there are there any amen, amen, amen? You know, when we go out, like you said, going out beyond the walls to reach the people, are there any particular challenges that you face when going out? And is there a particular uh, population that you're that you're seeking, whether it's uh, young people, women, when you go? We do, you know, mm-hmm. we do a lot. We do a lot with women. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, one of the components that we have in the ministry is called um, the National Women's Ministerial Alliance. And so um, we birthed that first, um, Mm -hmm. and that was really to give women in ministry and those that um, God has called that may have not answered their call yet a platform Mm -hmm. where they can learn, where they can grow and matriculate through the cycle of doing ministry as well as have a network base where we can come together collectively and talk about those things that challenges us in the process of doing ministry because it's very, very different for women in ministry as opposed to men. And Mm -hmm. men have had a network set up much, much longer than we have. And so to be able to provide that space where we can, you know, pray for one another, nurture each other, and prepare each other in the challenges that we're going to face as we go out to do ministry is one of the reasons why we could, why we created that particular platform within Jacqueline Williams Ministries. A um, couple of things that I'll touch on real quick that mm-hmm. that I know are just you know challenges that I've experienced as well as a lot of my sisters in ministry, and that is. Um, you know, within the traditional church setting, you still have those that believe that God did not call women to preach. To preach, and right. So be 
being able to get the support of the community churches behind you when you go into different areas to do ministry is one of the things that challenge us, especially if we're in a ministry in a in a city where you have um you know predominantly uh male church um leadership. Uh, and there's not a lot of women in leadership in that particular area. If they believe in that, you know, as a part of their belief system, then it is challenging when you go in. Um, mm-hmm. One of the things that I have learned, though, is that the it's imperative to deal with like-minded people in ministry that, mm-hmm. you know, when it's their turn to go out, and you know, and go into whatever uh sector that they want to minister in that they know that they have a system in place that they have people in place that will come and that will undergird them and cover them as they go um so in creating that, we were able to you know really address that particular challenge as it relates to you know being a woman in ministry and going out um you know, the word is for everybody. And, yeah. you know, and even though we focus on women and, you know, their state of brokenness, the things that are detrimental to them and trying to draw them out of those situations, we also understand that if we want healthy communities and whole people, then we have to minister to the the, to the total of the community, which means, you know, the women, the men, the children. Um, because if you do one and you leave one unaddressed, then, you know, then basically you find yourself having people in a tug of war because one is trying to lean towards Christ where the other is still wavering mm-hmm. in what it is they're going to do. So, you know, the challenges are great. Um mm-hmm. The challenges are great because you're you're talking about breaking so many different strongholds when right. you're out there. But the church of the 21st century is not like the church of, you know, the last century where people, um, you know, people migrated to the church in times of trouble, in times of turmoil, looking and searching for answers. Now the church is really facing that challenge where we have to live up to the standard of the mandate, and that is to go out. If you want to reach the lost, you're going to have to go. To go out. You know, there's really no Mm -hmm. fans and buts about it right now. Um, And so, you know, so that is one of the biggest you know, one of the biggest challenges. Um, and then crossing uh, denominational divides. That's the other one. Um, you know, oh. ha- getting folks to understand that within our different denominations, we may structure, you know, our system of how we operate within the church um, a little differently. But at the end of the day, All of us should be striving for the same common goal, and that is to win lost souls for Christ. And if we can blend, you know, our methods of outreach, our methods of, you know, how we, um, you know, try to get into these various pockets in the communities where folks are being challenged and not allow the nomination to separate us but to come together, you know, understanding that, you know, at the end of the day, we are supposed to all be one yeah. body in Christ, and you know, and we should be able to work together. It's it's challenging to set the precedent for those that are lost about mm-hmm. what the church can do and how Christ works. If folks within the church can't get along, can't work together, wow. can't wow. work together, yes. If there's a divide in the infrastructure of the church universal. So, you know, so those mm-hmm. are just some of the big hurdles, you know, that we we have to cross as it relates to getting out there and, you know, and trying to be effective in, in the work that we're doing. Have there been any surprises like, oh, I didn't anticipate this? 
when I had this vision. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Lots of, oh, my goodness. Like, I, I, I didn't anticipate this. <laughs> you, can, you can do a series on that, I'm telling you. You know, um, I did an interview last year um, at a television um, a network, and I was asked that same question. Mm-hmm. Uh, the young lady, you know, the twist on it was, you know, how do you deal with that? And what I was saying to her was, um, if you if you study the Word of God, if you truly believe mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. is in those sacred pages from yes. Revelation, then you have to be willing to accept the good parts in there yes. as, well as, as well as the things that you know, were warned about that were mm-hmm. challenges. Um, you know, his Word says that you are going to be persecuted. It yeah. is it is very unrealistic to walk into ministry whether mm-hmm. you're a male or female and not expect persecution. And yes. we said, you know, I hear the term church hurt. You know, I've had so many people ask me, you know, because of some of the challenges that I've faced in, you know, former churches, et cetera, um, you know, that didn't hurt you, that didn't bother you. You know, my answer is pretty much always the same. No, it didn't, because I believe what God's Word says. It says yeah. that when I take up this cross, mm-hmm. when I take up this cross and put my shoulder to the wheel to do this work right here, that mm-hmm. I am going to be persecuted, and it's going to come from some of the strangest places. Yeah. So when folks fall off, that, you know, that were once friends or associates Mm -hmm. or what have you, you know, I don't have time to, you know, there's too much at stake. Yes. So, you know, so I don't give myself the time to internalize those things to the point where it makes me stagnant and not Mm -hmm. want to move forward. If Christ was persecuted... Mm-hmm. then what makes us think that we're not going to suffer that? You know? Right. Um, I think one of the biggest things that I've had to challenge me in ministry was coming out of a church and, um, you know, and and walking in a meeting and have one wanting to physically put their hands on me, Ooh. you know, because of, you know, their position versus, you know, God's word. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Versus, versus God's, God's word. God's word. So since your position wasn't lining up with the word of God, and any time you shine light in dark places, strange mm-hmm. things will happen. Will happen. Even in, even in a church setting. And, you know, and so... When I had to deal with that particular situation, you know, my I, I have one basis, and that is to, as much as it challenges us sometimes, that is to exemplify the love of Christ. Mm. Because his love conquers all things. All yeah. things. Yeah. All things. You know, and and so yeah, I've had some I've had some extremely strange things to occur, you know, mm-hmm. thus far. But um, you know, but you keep your hands in God's hand, and mm-hmm. you know, and stay focused with your heart and your mind fixed on what what is going to come of your work, and you know, and you have to stay. Um, pray it up. You gotta stay prayed up, and yeah, you know, and uh, and you have to have the whole armor on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gotta have the whole armor on. Head to toe. <laughs> Head to toe. Head to toe. But yeah. We, you know, we are so filled with cliches. You know, mm-hmm. we love cliches. You know, we love cliches. You know, we love, <laughs> you know, to say, you know, um, for God I live, for God I die. Really. You know, the question is always, really, that sounds good until, you know, that sounds good until you are called to go into a town like Charlottesville, 
Virginia, yes. you know, to speak to the body, mm-hmm. understanding that in your going, you don't know how you're going to return or if you are going to return. If you are. And I'm so glad you mentioned that. I'm glad you mentioned that because, you you know, my next question was going to, was going to be, you know, there may be persons that are listening and are contemplating starting a ministry, starting an outreach. And I think it's important that you, that you speak on what you just mentioned about the, the, the reality of it. Oh, yeah. Of going out there, yeah, the reality of it. <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, one of the things that I have learned is that that has become so real to me is the understanding of why this is the highest calling. Mm-hmm. You know, beyond being the president of the United States, beyond you know leadership and superpowers, why this is the highest calling because. Mm-hmm. Your job, your mandate deals with the spirit and the soul, and the soul is our eternal part that will live on forever. You know, the soul is that part of us that Satan wants to conquer. You know, he, it's, it's not, you know, your body, your mind, that's only a gateway. You know, that's only a gateway. What he's after is the soul. Uh-huh. And what your responsibility is, is to... Look through what you see in people and keep your eyes focused on what's happening with their soul. And so when you understand what you're going after and what your foe is going after, you know, mm-hmm. you, you, have to, you have to be disciplined, not just in your work, but you have to be disciplined in your relationship with Christ because you have to go out there and be totally, completely prepared to do mm-hmm. battle. Look here, to do battle mm-hmm. for folks who don't even understand what is at risk. What you know? What is at risk? So, you know, okay, yeah, I'm sorry. That's, that's that's you know that's that's. Mm-hmm. <laughs> No, so that's some challenging. You know, that's that's a challenging situation right there. <laughs> it, it it is because yeah. you know I I I have I have this saying I, I always say this on my shows. The greatest conversation that you will ever have is the one that takes place in between your ears. What are you speaking to yourself? And is God a part of that conversation? And are we listening to His still small voice? So. In the in those moments that you just mentioned, when you're in that type of situation, you're in that Charlottesville situation, and you're and you're you're dealing with these souls. What does that conversation need to sound like? That that conversation has to has to be led by the Holy mm-hmm. Spirit. Mm-hmm. That is one of those conversations. That that is where you must understand that if your ministry mm-hmm. and you're ministering to people mm-hmm. is not coming from an authentic place, mm-hmm. that before you even get started, you're already at a loss. That would be the defining it, moment. It, yeah, it is a defining mm-hmm. moment because they mm-hmm. can see right through you. Yeah. You know, they they can see past what you're presenting mm-hmm. and, and understand, okay, that's not really coming from a real place. You know, they say that it, it sounds good, it sounds mm-hmm. good, but, you know, it's not coming from an authentic place. So when you're in that type of situation or any type of environment, out on the street, you know, mm-hmm. dealing with, um, you know, prostitutes, dealing with drug addicts, dealing with, you know, gang members, whatever, wherever you are, you have got to truly understand that your conversation has to have all of the essence of what the Spirit wants to pour out of you for that particular time in ministry, because 
you know, because if you are just trying to say what you think they want to hear, mm-hmm. then, you know, the ear gate has already closed. Yes. The ear gate has already closed because they understand that the purpose of you being there is not really about them, but more so about you. You know what I mean? More yeah. so about you. You know, you being able to say, you know, oh, I did this or I went there or, Mm -hmm. you know, so many got saved or or what have you. No, it has to be about the authentic work, and that is trying to crack that stony ground and make it pliable so that, you know, whatever seed you drop, um, Mm -hmm. If you're exiting that situation, then the next person that comes in that the Lord sends in can continue to do the work as it cultivates so that prayerfully, in its due season, you know, it will spring forth and it will come forth, you know, on good ground. You know, and and so in doing that, you have to be, you know, you have to be authentic. And being authentic means that you have got to step outside of the box and you are going to walk against the grain because your message can't be, you know, and I, and I, I preach this and I teach this and I say it all the time. Um, you, if if you're preaching fluffy, feel good messages, Mm -hmm. then basically, you know, and if you're talking this fluffy talk, you know, then basically you're defeating the purpose because nothing that Christ did from his coming down, leaving the right hand of his father, coming down and the work that he did, you can't make that look fluffy. Look at the end result of what happened. He came here knowing that he was going to die and what he was dying for. There's, right. there's nothing glamorous about that. Mm-hmm. You know, rewarding, yes, but glamorous, no. It, you know, it is the pure, the purest essence of truth, God's word. Can you go, can you go back and elaborate a little bit more? You, you were talking earlier about the soul and 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 understanding the the soul of the of the person that you're dealing with and not being distracted by, you know, the, 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 the outer man. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Well, you know, I think that um, it's very interesting mm-hmm. um, because we have a tendency to focus on the flesh. Yes. Which is one of the reasons why I think people have such a hard time coming out of, you know, different levels of brokenness. Mm. Because, you know, because in your mind it is, well, I need to get this flesh under subjection. You know, I mm-hmm. need to deal with the challenges of the flesh. You know, if if I'm a, you know, if I'm a, a if I ha- if I'm dealing with a drug addiction or whatever the situation may be, you know, let me deal with this the physical aspect of this. No, you need to start with the spiritual aspect. If you work on your inner man, then your outer man will line up. Mm-hmm. If you work on your outer man first, then basically what you're trying to do is something that you can't do absent of Christ being in you and you being in Christ and, and, and the Holy Spirit working within you. But if you focus on your inner man, if you focus on your spirit and your soul first and nurture that first, gain a better understanding of what is spirit, what is soul, the fact that before, long before you were in shroud and flesh, you were spirit. You know, in the Mm -hmm. book of Genesis, when he spoke it into existence, you were there. You were created right then and there. Yes. He's not in heaven cranking out souls every day going, you know, oh, today I'm going to. No. When he spoke it in creation, in the creation story, your soul was created. Now, the road to discovery is discovering who Christ, who God created you to be. 
when you can focus on that, the more you understand who you are and who he created you to be, then the things that challenge you in the flesh will start to drop off and will fade away. Mm -hmm. it, it, layers will come off. But that's we try to take we try to take we try to take the layers off mm -hmm. and the core the core is is jacked up. No, let me deal with the core first. Because if I can understand who he has created me to be and he said all that he created was good. So if I can understand and trust in the good that he has created within me, then that good will conquer whatever I have going on mm -hmm. in my outer man with my flesh. And it mm -hmm. will teach me that when I fall, he will bear me up and that he has angels that will help me to just, I may slip, but I will not mm -hmm. fall. I won't fall where I can't get back up. So when I teach, when I preach, I preach and teach from that perspective of let's look at let's look at finding the authentic you because once we can do that then those things that that's plaguing you on the outside it will go away because you want you lose interest in those things because mm -hmm. you're going to see through a different set of lens and you know, on in, in that journey, and oh my gosh, what, what you're saying is so it's so deep. No pun intended, <laughs> but it's so deep and it's so powerful because I think a lot of times we don't realize that we we've got to do that work first to really, um, you know, understand our inner soul to really get a a, a, a grasp on that, and in the process, doing that work on our inner man, but in the process of that, would you agree that we, we got to peel back some layers because mixed in all of that may be some of our baggage from the past, some, some um, wounds from the baggage from the past that have not healed properly, that have to be addressed before we can really get to that inner, inner man? Well, see, that, that's the interesting dynamics. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example. <clears throat> because I do a workshop and a conference um, based on our television ministry show, which is called Get Off the Wall. Mm -hmm. It's based on the life of Rahab the harlot who was on the wall. I often say to people, when I, when, when I created that particular conference, the Spirit of the Lord said to me, I was invited to a church to speak at a woman's conference, and it was dealing with pain. Mm -hmm. And I've always been fascinated by Rahab. And when I was preparing for the conference, the Holy Spirit just spoke to me and said, have you ever thought of how Rahab got on the wall in the first place? Wow. How did she leave the city? How? What happened? Mm -hmm. Something There's a story. Happened. In her life, there's a story there. Right. Even though it's not unfolded in Scripture, there's a story there. Nobody leaves the city and says, oh, I think today I just want to go up on the wall and be a prostitute. Mm -hmm. Just as nobody wakes up in the 21st century and says, you know what, today I just want to go be a gangbanger or a drug dealer or a pro That's not something has had, something had to have happened. Mm-hmm make you abandon the city and say, you know what, <clears throat> I'm going up on this wall because the people on this wall are in the same boat that I'm in and, and I'm in. we can mask each other's pain and we can help numb each other's situation so that we don't have to deal with what is going on internally, you know, because right. down in the city, down in the city, you know, you're not accepted. So let me go where I'm accepted. And when mm -hmm. I started crafting the conference um, and looking at that, one thing that was very interesting, and this will answer the question that you asked, the two spies that came into the city and went up on the wall looking for Rahab, when she had the conversation with the spies, 
notice in that conversation now, she never talks about herself. No Mm -hmm. more than to say, if I help you, will you preserve me and my family? She saw them. She never said anything about how she got up there, what, Mm -hmm. what was her triggers. But what she did say, which was very profound and a defining moment, was, I heard of your God. I heard, mm, look, when, yeah. when, when I can't figure out what's going on within me, mm-hmm. knowing, knowing how I got up on this wall, I heard of your God. She, the, the focus wasn't even on her in right. that moment. The focus was on the fact that she understood that their God delivered them from and that if he could deliver them mm-hmm. from the enemy and bring them into this place where she knew that they were going to conquer that king. Right. That surely, if he could do all of that, he mm-hmm. could get her off of that wall if she got a better understanding and had a relationship with him and who he is and what he could do in her life. Wow. Once you get once you get there, what mm-hmm. happens is the relationship gives you the courage to begin that journey of peeling back those layers. Until then, all of those layers are just your crutch. That's your crutch. Mm-hmm. It's your crutch. Mm-hmm. It's your mechanism. It's your crutch. It's your ex- it's your excuse for being mean and nasty. It's your excuse. You know, it's your excuse for staying stuck because this is what you know. And sometimes pain runs so deep until yes. it's comfortable. It's comfortable. Yes. I don't know. And it becomes the norm. And then it, yeah. And then it becomes and it becomes the norm. Minister Jack, Jacqueline Williams, thank you so much. We have run out of time because we certainly, this is such a heavy and deep conversation, but unfortunately we have run out of time. Thank Amen. you so much. Yes, thank you so much. Can you tell the audience real quickly uh, how they can reach out to you and, and uh, website and that sort of thing? Amen. Um, yes. Uh, you can look us up on Facebook at Jacqueline mm-hmm. Williams Ministries. Um, you can also uh, call us. We have a ministry line. The number is 843-593-2688. Again, that number is 843-593-2688. And if you go on the Facebook uh, site, for our ministry, you will mm-hmm. find all of the information there that you need to get to um, our radio network, the television network. Everything is right on um, is right on our site. All right, thank you so much. Thank God you. bless you, and God bless your ministry as you continue to do what it is that God has called you to do. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Minister Jacqueline Williams, along with Dwayne Culpepper, a.k.a. The Corrin. And right now, we are going to transition to the Christian party line. And my sister Chanel Lynn Malloy, Malloy, my sister Patrice Jackson, my sister Shay Sams. Ladies, how are you? Fabulous. We're fabulous. Hey, how are you? Wonderful. Good morning. Hey, Chanel. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? <laughs> Happy birthday, my sister. I'm- Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday to you. Aww. Happy birthday, Chanel. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you, Paula. Happy Aww. birthday. <laughs> thank you. I feel so special. Oh, thank you. <laughs> having a good well, time out here in Atlanta. I'm having a thing. Yes. Yeah. I'm just trying to breathe <laughs> here in Atlanta. Paula. <laughs> I'm just trying to breathe, y'all. That's all. I don't want much right. yeah. to breathe. <laughs> so now, how long have you been in Atlanta? Huh? How long have you been in Atlanta? Oh, we just got here. We just got here, like, not too long ago. Oh, Probably okay. Like maybe well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, welcome yes. to the ATL. 
<laughs> yes. We're, we're gonna have to get together. We're gonna have to get together, ladies. Yes, Most I definitely. Mean, I'm here, Paula. You know I'm here, so we'll have yes. to. Well, you I'll celebrate. Definitely. You have fun, Chanel. Yes. Yes. Remember, <laughs> just remember, well, you passed for Chanel, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pass Chanel on your birthday, <laughs> honey. She has passed the mantle. I don't know if I receive it yet. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> And she don't know oh, yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that is awesome. That is awesome. So what, what, do you, what do you ladies want to talk about tonight? I'm going to hang for a little bit. Oh, my. We, we have an awesome, awesome topic tonight. Um, we, we were discussing it. You know, people send me. Now, it's, it's so funny because, ladies, people actually send me um, topics now, like that they want to hear about. And so mm -hmm. today's topic is about Christian dating in the church. Why do we mm. go as Christian women? Why, as Christian women, why do we go for the bad guys? Why, why are mm. we dating in the church? <laughs> why, Ladies, wait, are you ready for that? Why do we go for the bad guys in the church? Yeah, why do we go for the? In, no, well, not necessarily in the church. I mean, why aren't mm -hmm. we going for the guys in the church? You know, we're you know as Christian women, we're always mm -hmm. dating outside the church. I'm not going to say always. But, mm -hmm. like, you know, this, it's a discussion to be had. We, we date the guys that we're, we're trying to bring in the church, and we go through the drama with, you know, uh, the cheating, and, and we fall for it. We're going to church every Sunday. They may not be going mm -hmm. with us. So mm -hmm. we're going to be talking to a whole group of women tonight that's possibly doing that, and we're going to deliver them. Mm, Amen. We're going to Amen. <laughs> Amen. We're going to do some deliverance tonight. We're going to deliverance. <laughs> We're gonna do some deliverance tonight, yeah. <laughs> Amen. So it's a, it's a hot, it's a very hot topic, very hot topic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So wow. Paula, Paula said she's sticking around. She's sticking around. So oh, I'll stick around um, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, I know that I I know that Chanel's gonna be celebrating her birthday. So happy birthday to Chanel and um, Thank Patrice you, is honey. on the line. Patrice, I don't think I, I, I know you're here, but how are you? How are you? Patrice. I am doing good. It was nice weather today. It was beautiful. Yes, it, was. it was a great it week. Was. Finally. Mm-hmm. It was Finally. Warm. You've been getting snow. <laughs> right, but the thing is, you're the one that got hit. No, on Wednesday. But I'm going to enjoy today and tomorrow. There you go. Thank good, you good, go. good. Awesome. It's supposed to be nice out tomorrow. Um, I have an event that I'm going to be doing worship, um, ministering in worship here in Atlanta. Um, so I'm excited about that, celebrating a fourth anniversary for one of um, my pastor friends. And um, so I'm excited about that. Excellent. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm excited about yeah. that. Um, but you finally got good weather. You thought we all finally got good weather. So we're in sync. Yeah. That's what being on one accord looks like. <laughs> We we were all that's we were all on. praying for the same thing. <laughs> yes, that's what sister power looks like. We make it happen. Yeah, yeah. That's what people need to mm -hmm. understand. When you're in unity and on one accord, it just happens. So you guys can thank us for all the good weather you got today. Eighty two, seventy six. I think <laughs> uh, and it's, it's you know, I've gotten to a point too. I just moved into my home in October and mm -hmm. I'm still learning the temperatures. So I'm adjusting this the thermostat like every Five minutes, oh, it's too hot, yeah. it's too cold. I even had the electric fireplace on today, and then I turned yeah. it off, and then I turned the ceiling fan on. <laughs> and I, you know, and I've done that too because, you know, if your home is, you know, if the outside of your home is brick or if it's stucco, it could be very nice outside, but it's very cold, yeah. you know, in, inside because that brick and that stucco, that stucco, you know, it, it retains the cold air. So yeah, you got the, you know, you got the electric fireplace on, and and people are like, you know, okay, it's, it's seventy five degrees outside. Why you got an electric fireplace on? Because it's cold in the house. It's you cold know, in is, the house. You yeah. Know? yeah. <laughs> it's cold in the house. So it's like you know, we had the window open. So yeah, I'm I'm that type of sleeper. I have the window open, the covers on, the ceiling fan on, and the fireplace on. There you go. <laughs> I'm, and that's I'm like my that's that. like my. Coach. <laughs> I'm too young for that. I'm too young for it. That's like. <laughs> I am at that's it. my coaching <laughs> tip. Well, let's give a shout out to music video profile with Sky profiling music videos by Shay, myself, Shay Samuel, Carlisa Beach. 
the Wayne God, Tent Osborne, and Sean Ray Price. I love Sean Ray. I love, yes. love, love Sean Ray. If you're listening, <laughs> shout out to Sean Ray um, Price. I love her music. I love her personality. Um, so shout out to her. And um, we're just going to take a quick music break before we get started. I know that Chanel has to get going. Um, before we go, again, happy birthday, um, Chanel, and we will be sending you shout-outs all throughout the course of the night. So you may not be on, but you might want to listen so your friends can hear how fabulous um, you are on this radio show tonight, okay? Yes, most definitely. Uh, all Thank right, you. well, we'll take a music break, and we'll come back, and we'll come right back with the hot topic Christian dating. Awesome. Christian dating. We'll give you the rest when we come back. Christian dating. We'll be right back after this news after the music. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to Christian. That's right, the Christian Party Line with Shea Sam and Patrice Jackson and Chanel Lynn. That's right, and tonight we got Paula G joining us. All right, let's take a music break. You're listening to Late Night with Jervis Live Worldwide in the Christian Party Line with the ladies. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Hi, this is Lady T, urban gospel artist from Jackson, Mississippi. You're listening to Positive Power, Double XI Christian Radio on Spreaker Radio and Facebook Live. So keep it locked. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. I tell you, if these were silent, if these are very rocks would cry out. You're listening to The Christian Party Line on Friday nights with Jerry Royce live. All right, all right, we're back. We're back. Uh, welcome to Late Night Radio. This is The Christian Party Line on the Positive Power 21 Christian Radio. And I am your host, Chase Samuels, with Miss Patrice and Miss Chanel. And I think we still have Paula G on the line, right? Yes, ma'am. Oh, she stuck in with us. She stuck with us. Shout out to Paula G. You stuck I'm with hanging. us. You stuck with us now. Yeah. <laughs> She's hanging tonight. I'm hanging. She's hanging. <laughs> I love it. She's hanging tonight. So we do want to give a shout out to your show, My Journey with Paula G, and special guest and indie gospel artist Anthony Avery on Sunday night. 
um, your show is doing a really, really um, good thing for independent artists. So I just love what you are doing. Um, shout out to Jerry Royce. Um, you, you guys are just setting a mark. My mom and I were talking about you all today and mm-hmm. yesterday. She's just she's in love with Jerry's show. And um, you, you both are set. We, we all are, but you guys are setting the standard for what independent music looks like, for what um, internet radio and podcast radio and TV shows look like. And so I'm just honored to be a part of what you're doing and um, the extended arm of the Jerry Royce um, Positive Power 21 Christian Radio, his children. Oh, my God. Yeah. You know, like the Bible said, train a child as they should go, and his children mm-hmm. are a part of this big vision. Shout out to Music Vision, one of Jerry's, um, another one of his visions. So, I mean, we could go on and on and on and all night just about all the things that God is doing with Positive Power 21 and Jerry Royce Live Worldwide. Um, yeah. But we're just honored to be a part of it. Paul, tell us a little bit about your show. We're family. We're family. You know, my journey, I had traveled up to Maryland about three weeks ago, and we recorded about six shows. And it was just an amazing experience. And and first of all, let let me back up. For the season of Lent from Ash Wednesday to Easter Sunday minus the Sundays, is the 40 days of Lent. And I usually will fast in one way, shape, form, or fashion. And this year I decided that I would fast from food from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Did I say that right? Yeah. 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And there were a, a few things that I was fasting for and I was seeking. One, a closer relationship. Um, I wanted to, you know, I already feel that I have a, a, a close relationship, a good relationship, but I wanted to get closer. So during that period of fasting, I was seeking more clarity on some things and spending more time with God and um, developing an even closer relationship with Him. Also, one of the other things that I was fasting and praying for were doors of opportunity to be opened um, for me in in television and radio. That was the prayer. Doors of opportunity to be open in television and radio. So when I say that during that time period, being able to take those six episodes of my journey was came through fasting and prayer, it came through fasting and prayer. So for me, that's, that's how that happened, and I just give God all the glory. And even now as I'm, I'm talking about it, you know, I'm kind of trying to <laughs> stay cool because I just <laughs> think about, you know, it, it's, it's nothing but God. It's just absolutely Amen. nothing how all of that came together. It's nothing but God. But the show Amen. is just... Uh, a journey. It's just that. It's a journey. We talk with the independent artists about their journey through their music or whatever their gift may be. For some, it may be musicians. We may be talking to some poets in the future. We may be talking to some producers in the future, independent artists. We talk about their journey through their art, through their music. Amen. And then the second part of the show, we talk about the testimony. And sometimes the testimony is separate from the music ministry journey, but it's part of the overall journey, you know. And I think it's so important, yes, and I think it's so important, those of us who are in this industry, in this business, especially independent artists, people see you all performing your music and they see you on stage or they listen to your CDs, your albums, what have you, and they look and, you know, they may say, oh, uh, you know, they've got it made. They've got everything. Everything, it just looks wonderful and they're, you know, performing and they're walking in their gift and their life must be wonderful. And to some degree it is. But a lot of people don't understand the journey that it took to get there 
You know, and yeah. a lot of us don't. A lot of us don't wear our journey. You don't wear your journey. I don't yeah. wear my journey. Shan Ray doesn't wear her. You know, we don't wear our journey. So a lot of people don't understand. I think it's so important for people to be able to hear these stories, especially those rising independent artists who may be yeah. feeling discouraged, or they may be feeling I'm so overwhelmed. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm working yeah. my day job, and I've got family, and I got children, and I'm, you know, I'm trying to create music, and I'm trying to do these things. And then they see an artist on my journey, and they see the artist talk about their music. And then they see the artist yeah. talk about, well, you know, I juggle this. I have a full-time job, and I've got a, a wife or husband, depend, you know, depending on whether it's a man or woman. I've got children, and when I get my children off to school, I've got to go to work. And then when I come home from work, you know, I, I work late into the night on my music. And then that person that's sitting there that was so discouraged is suddenly encouraged. Because they're like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. You know, they do some of the same I, things we deal with. Yeah. 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 I, I so, would say, too, so um, we were mm-hmm. just talking about a music video today that I'm going to be putting together that actually talks to what you're talking about is showing my journey, um, but mm-hmm. this is for my song, Just For Me, and so yeah. we kind of dialogued that thing out today, and um, we had it set for one way, and then we ended up coming up with something coming different, back. Um, my team and I. So, yeah, so, and it's going to show, it's going to show that. Um, the pic, the picture of what you just said, everything that I go through on mm-hmm. the background, but he there you go. what he did just for me. So thank you yeah. so much for that. Well, we're going to jump right into this topic again. We know that Chanel has to go, but I love, 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 love hearing her um, give her responses. Um, that's how she got past the Chanel. So, ladies, tonight's hot topic, if you are on live, why do Christian women date outside the church? With all of the men that's in the church striving to be better men, um, you know, the deacons or uh, men who were coming in and they love the Lord, yet we're still seeking the the world or the street for uh, for our men, (laughs) for our men. Why do we do that to ourselves? And then we start beating ourselves up that we're looking, we we say we're looking for godly men, but we still look out um, in the world. So, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass this question over, and I have three more questions to go with this, but I'm going to pass this question over to Pastor Chanel before she has to go. Pastor Chanel, why do Christian women date outside the church? Woo, honey, that, uh, this, <laughs> is a, this is a very, uh, my goodness, this topic is really, really deep. I mean, I can go in two different directions, which I will in like 2.5 seconds. Okay, so <laughs> now, <laughs> now, when, um, when dating, you know, in the church, there are, um, there are a lot of men in the church who are not living like, you know, they're not, you know, uh, Come living on, holy lives it. outside of the church. Uh-huh. You know uh-huh. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. it's difficult for a woman who wants to, who has the desire to um, live the life, you know, beyond the four walls of the church, you know, before God. And so it's difficult so t- sometimes. And so a lot of women... <laughs> would find themselves just dating mighty, you know, the feeling kind of defeated or, or feeling a little bit hopeless in, you know, the men in the church because, you, because, you know, they feel like they'll, they're, they, they feel like they'll, you know, experience the same thing, whether you're in or out of the church, which is unfortunate, but that's not the majority. Now the risk that I believe that women take um, when doing that is, um, when you get involved with someone that is outside of the church, somebody who is not saved, let's say that, um, a man who is not saved, you risk uh, the enemy using that individual not just to draw you further away from God in your relationship or your uh-huh. intimacy uh-huh. with God, but you risk uh, attacks. You know what I'm saying? Yes. From yes. the enemy yeah. using, you know, that man will be like the doorway or the vehicle for an uh, attack that could be up close and personal, you know, but at the same time, on the flip side of that, oh, it's really deep, you know, on the flip side of even that, sometimes God will even use them or choose you to even uh, uh, um, 
to, 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 I guess, I don't want to say date, but sometimes God will have your soulmate outside of the church, not saying that that person won't always, uh, uh, you know, will always be that way. But if you look at, if you look in the Bible and you look at Boaz, you know, uh, Ruth uh-huh. and, uh, Boaz wasn't even saved in the beginning, was he? Uh-huh. He wasn't uh-huh. even, he, he didn't have a relationship with God in the beginning. Um, right. But, of course, he ended up, yeah, you know, he ended up, you know, um, uh, a believer and everything, you know. And so, and then you yeah. even have situations now where, like, when uh, when I was talking to Dwayne Gott, you know, he said that he was a 5 percenter when he met his wife, who, of course, wasn't his wife at the time. But, right, right. you know, he was going to church with her and everything, you know, and so he allowed for God to, you know, uh, draw him just by going, being willing to go to church and everything. And I believe yes. when I told him, you know, that that he was won over, not just by, you know, the, the preached word, but by the woman, uh, by his wife, um, by his, her her chasing behavior, like the word of God says, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. sometimes we can be judgmental. Sometimes right. we can be a little bit, uh, um, I guess, I, I guess the word I want to use is a little bit too loose, um, or a little bit yeah. too compromising. So I think it's important that we be, we make sure that we be led, um, by God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When, right. you know, Finding a, a, a spouse, a marital um, spouse. Yeah. And do you think that, let me just ask this um, to Patrice, do you think that, um, just be, piggybacking off of what Pastor Chanel said, do you think that um, women are even looking for spouses in this generation, or is it just the dating? You don't hear too many people talk about marriage anymore. They are looking for dating. Do you think women are looking to be married now? Um, I think, I honestly think that it's, it's 50-50. I have, you know, I have a, a good set of associates and friends that I talk to, um, on, you know, about things like this, and some of them want to be married. You know, they want to be married, they want a husband, um, and then there's others that have already been married or they've been in long-term relationships that were um, like marriage, and so they're kind of like, mm-hmm. I just want to date, I don't want to be um I don't want to have to answer to anyone else. And uh-huh. Uh-huh. so I just think it's really, mm. you know, depending, it's it really depend. I think it's, it's serious. It depends on the situation. Yeah. You know, because if you were in this long, a lot of times um, you have women who uh, maybe had children early and they had, they got, were in a relationship with this person or been dealing with the tr- the father of their children for many years. And now they're, they're like, you know, I'm, my kids is older. I've dealt with these men and, the dating scene is not what people think it is, right? You know, you have to yeah. ask questions. It's like you going on an interview, right, when you get married. Yeah. You have to ask all these questions of who this person is. You got to see their family. You want to, you know. So I think some people, women are just like, I just will be by myself and maybe date every yeah. once in a while or have a friend with my quotation fingers up. And yeah. they're happy with that. So I just really think yeah. it's very individual to individual. Yeah, and I think, too, what what this does is it really opens up the gate for us to begin to see. One thing you said was a lot of us don't want to answer to men anymore. You know, when I was growing up, submission was key when it it came to women. You know, my grandmother was submissive to to my grandfather um, on both sides. My my dad's side and my mother's side both were submissive to family and I think or to the, the husbands, and that was how we were brought up traditionally. Now in this generation, the women are becoming the men. That's the, that's the alternative. We're working harder. We're making more money. We're making more money than the men. We probably have more than the men. And so what you just said is we get to a point now where we don't even want to answer to the men. And, and I think so, traditionally, so, too, it, was, mm-hmm. it wasn't just that they – they were submissive, but honestly, they had to be because they were, right. a lot of women were, you know, just recently, just like African Americans were able to vote, right? Or go, or when they go to school, they were going to school to get their MRS, as people would say, and not an MBA, right? And uh-huh. so they uh-huh. had to be, you had to have a, be in a relationship, you had to have a husband because who was going to feed you? 
you know, right. who, who, right. who was going to give you a, um, a roof over your head. So you really had no right. choice. And now we ha- women have right. choices. Right. And I think, too, that it gives us the option to just, like I said, now this whole discussion is why are we dating outside of the church? If we're saying that we're looking for godly men, I think about First Corinthians where it says, do not be deceived, bad company ruins good morals. And so, but yet we continue to look for the bad morals. There was a song um, when I was thinking about this topic, why do good girls? Like bad guys. <laughs> yes, I remember that song. I mean, because it's so true. It's so true. Um, even right now, the younger generation, you know, there's a lot of younger boys that are going to church now. And I watch even um, my goddaughter, unfortunately, my goddaughter, um, my niece, you know, she um, – this, there's a one. There's one little boy, and he is a handsome young man, raised with a Christian family, and um, mom and dad are awesome. And he is so um, uh, graceful for to be a young boy, opening the doors. He's so respectful, mm. and I might ask her, like, "What do you think about him?" And she'll say, "No." And then she'll show me a guy that she likes, and this guy's pants sagging down, um, his boxers are showing. Um, not respectful, and this is what she likes. So women, bad company ruins good morals. Bad company corrupts good seed. <laughs> so so we need, to pay, we need to pay more attention to that. Um, Chanel, I have another question. I don't know how much more time we have with you. Can I ask you one more question? Uh, did she, did she okay. get the next one? Right. Okay. You're, you're here? Okay. Okay. Saying. All right. So. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and then my next question is going to go to Paula, and then we're going to go to another song. Um, but because this is such a hot topic, I want to get as many, many questions as I can in um, so that we don't go over. But, um, yeah, bad company corrupts the seed. What, mm-hmm. what, what do you think about that? I mean, what, talk to, break that down for us. Bad company corrupts the seed. What does that mean for our topic mm-hmm. today? Um, well, number one, that is the word of God, you know, uh, that, you know, bad communication does corrupt good marriage. Um, you are who you hang around, you know, as people in the world say, birds of a feather flock together, whoever you link yourself up with, that's who you become. You know, they say, you know, you hear people saying, you know, if you want to be, um, you, if you want to be, um, rich or you want to be successful, you hang around people who are rich and successful, um, you know, because that you, you learn their lingo, you learn how they Mm -hmm. live, you kind of develop, you know, their lifestyle Mm -hmm. and everything, you know, it becomes an an influence on your mindset. Mm -hmm. It kind of, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Changes, uh, the way or, or, or form, you know, uh, uh, the way you think, you know, you kind of conform to your surroundings. Um, and so yes. that's why um, it's important that um, we we must we definitely we most definitely uh, we must um, l- make sure we we take care of who we link ourselves up with yes. because yes. I mean no matter no matter what or I mean no matter who it is or what they're doing if you you hang around those people long enough you definitely will you know adopt their behaviors you know their yes. mannerisms yes. everything. We are yes. we, we absorb a lot of things, you know, even vibes and everything, you know. Um, and yes. so, yeah. Um, even with even with that, um, I think we got to make sure that um, whoever we link ourselves. I think a good way to notice, even if it's subtle, um, that we are linked to the wrong person. I think a good way to really notice that you're linked to the wrong person is take a look at your relationship with God. Take a look if yeah. whether or not you are further away or closer with your relationship yeah. with God. And is, it, is it hindering you, uh, uh, what you are doing, you know, for God? Is it hindering, you know, the call of God on your life? Amen. And that's why she's Pastor Amen. Chanel. That's why she's Pastor Amen. Chanel. That is, 
Uh, listen, I that's that blessed right. me, and I'm married. That blessed me, and I'm married. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> that blessed me, and I'm married. And you know what? I think I think that you know if we can stand by those principles, if we understand that the bad company, bad company, we may not see it as bad. But um, I, I do a conference every year titled God is in Everything, and one of the segments of the conference is about singleness, God being in your singleness. And the lady who spoke every year, there's a different speaker, but the first year she said, if you want to know that you are walking with God, look at your nightstand. As a single woman, if you want to know that you're still in that place that you used to be, look at what's on your nightstand. You know, when you were first a believer, you had your Bible, your notes. You had, you had everything pertaining to the love of God, your cross necklace, and then you start flipping right. a little bit, and you don't realize now you got Vogue magazine, and you got, um, you know, some book, you know, why he cheated, what DVD do you have, but you can tell where you are by what's on your nightstand, and I do that. I check, mm. I check for that. I check for that. Yeah. So. Yeah, I check for that. So, Paula, let me ask you, and then we're going to go to a, we're going to go to another song after this. But what do you think is the hardship with dating the men in the church? Why are we seeking outside of that? You know, I, I now I'm I'm probably the senior sister of the group, <laughs> <laughs> so my perspective might be just a little bit different. <laughs> you know, first, firstly, let me say. Whether he's in the church or he's outside of the church, at the end of the day, let me let me back up. Whether he's in the church, he's outside the church, even if he's got a collar around his neck, at the end of the day, a man is a man is a man. What we have to do as women is, you know, the Bible says, write the vision, make it plain. We have to have an honest conversation with ourselves. What is it? We have to have that, that what I was saying before to, um, with Minister Williams, greatest conversation you will ever have is the one that takes place in between your ears. What are you speaking mm-hmm. to yourself? What is your I am? Is God a part of that conversation? Are, you, are we listening to his still, small voice? So where it needs to start is with that conversation that conversation Amen. with God and leading, helping us to discern what it is that we need, want, and seek in a man. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm the old school, the priest, the provider. I mean, we need that. We need that wisdom. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We the, need that wisdom. Priest, we need that priest, wisdom. The priest, the provider, the protector. The reason we go after the bad boy is because we confuse the bad boy with the protector. The oh, bad boy with the protector. That's why we go after oh. the, to, to mm. the bad boy. We're mm-hmm. looking for that priest. Oh. We're looking for that provider. We're looking for that protector. Just because a man is not in church does not mean church is not it. God is not in a man. It is not yeah. so much Amen. about the religion as it is about the relationship. And I'm not I'm not that encouraging so my sisters to you know go outside the church and look for a man. I'm not saying that, but. Right. You know, we, we have to discern, you have to seek, first of all, what is in our own soul. Just like what uh, uh, Minister Williams said earlier about really seeking and understanding, working on our inner soul as a woman. Once we work on our inner soul as a woman, we can then make better choices. God gives us wisdom for our intuition as women for a reason. He gives us instinct as a reason. So before we go out and before we venture into, you know, seeking a mate, you know, we want to ask God, God, give me that peace that surpasses all Mm -hmm. understanding. Help me to make the right choices. Help me to make the right decisions. Release and remove that which is not of you because I may not necessarily be able to discern that which is not of you. You know, when, when you're Amen. looking, when we're looking for a mate, we've got to ask ourselves these questions. We've got to ask yeah. ourselves questions first. We can't always blame the man for the choices that we make. If we're making the right. choice, if we're making the right. choice to, to, to be with a cheater and stay with a cheater, we cannot blame the cheater because we made the choice to stay with the cheater. If the cheater cheats and we stay with the cheater, we're giving the cheater permission to cheat again. So 
Amen. You know, we, we, we've got to, we've got to sometimes hold that mirror up. And I know a lot of times we, we don't like necessarily like to, you know, to hear that, you know, when you, when we're looking for a mate is, are you in that man's subconscious? Are you in his stuff? Can you say something gradually? You having a conversation, you bump something under your breath, I got a headache. And you keep on going with the conversation. And the next thing you know, the man shows up at the door with a compress for your head and, and aspirin. I'm just kind of using a, a, a frivolous example. But I barely spoke that. But he heard right. that. Are, we, are yeah. you in his subconscious? You know, are we in uh-huh. the subconscious? The whole submissive thing, and I know I'm going to get a whole lot of my sisters upset about this, regardless of whether I'm making more money than him or not, is, is I know that he is being led by God. If I know he's the priest, if I know he's the protector, if I know he's the provider, I don't have a problem submitting. I don't have a problem yes. submitting. I don't care if I'm making more than him or not. I don't have a problem yes. submitting because at the end of the day, I'm not trying to be a man. I am not, I ain't never been a man, don't know how to be a man, don't want to be a man. I am not trying to be a man. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you know? Amen. You, you I'm know, so we need that that so You know, it, yes, and even though I may be successful and I may make six figures and so forth, at the end of the day, I can only speak for Paula G. I'm raising my hand. Yeah, I want a man. I need a man. Yeah. And I want him to yeah. walk in that, in the, in that, um, in that, in that, in those shoes, and in that path, and I'm not going to do or say anything to uh, emasculate him or or be disrespectful yeah. or anything of that nature. However, I'm not going to be a doormat as, either. So there's got to be balance. There's got to be communication. Amen. You got to have someone that you can communicate with that you all can have conversations talk through whatever, whatever it is. It's the whole, for me, it's the whole ride or die theory. Ain't but two of you yes. in the car. Ain't but two ah. of you in the car. Don't let anybody else in that car. You can fight, fuss, cuss, whatever. But at the end of the day, the two of you and only the two of you are in the car. Sometimes you're driving. Sometimes he's driving. But when you're going off into the sunset, the two of you are in the car. That's a ride or die relationship. And, and the, thing, the reason, the way that we get to these kinds of relationships, it's an investment. It's an investment of our time. It's an investment yeah. of our emotions. A lot of our systems yeah. don't necessarily want to, want to do that. Now, I totally get it. I understand. But if we want that, that, that man that we say that we want, we've got to put in the time. We've got to invest. We, we have to see what he's bringing to the table, but, by, but also we have to bring to the table what it is that will bring out that man that we desire. Amen. Right. And I think we're going to come back with that. No, mm-hmm. we're going to come back with that. And I love that we have you on the line because, you know, for a conversation like this, it does, it does warrant wisdom. Um, mm-hmm. Not that we don't have wisdom as young women, um, right. but I think hearing, um, <laughs> hearing from you, it's not just, you know, someone on, listening live mm-hmm. or on Spreaker Radio and saying, you know, they, they're young, they don't know what they're talking about, but to know that we have one of our senior sisters on the line. I don't see you as a senior mm. sister. You're my sister. <laughs> well, but you, we're love. going to say we're gonna, we have a woman of wisdom on the line um, yeah. that can really talk to what you're, what you, 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 what you're knowledgeable about, um, bringing us back to where it began. You know, mm-hmm. um, yes, you may make enough money. You may make more money than your man, but it doesn't mean that you have to emasculate them. It doesn't mean mm-hmm. that you don't need a man because you do make more money. And mm-hmm. it could be one of the reasons why, women look outside the church as well because mm-hmm. men, they feel like the men are um, not educated enough to know what the Word of God says, to follow the Word of God, and they're in control at that point. So we'll come back with that. Mm-hmm. Right now we're going to go ahead to another song, but we're going to come back and we're asking, we're asking, we're asking, we're asking, why do Christian women date outside the church? We want to hear your comments on Facebook Live if you're watching. We want to see your comments on Facebook Live if you're watching. Freaker Radio, we are asking the question, why do Christian women date outside the church? Now, I, I started off with Christian women, but we're going to talk about Christian men as well. We're going to talk about believers in the body of Christ who have all these awesome women who are serving Christ upright, but they can mm. to look outside the church. So we're going to flip the table a little bit. And then if you're listening, we want to hear your responses as well. Right now, we'll be, we'll be right back after this song. Awesome. I love you guys.
It's going down. Saturday, June 23rd in Yeah, Dad, Greenville, South Carolina. As the National and Independent Gospel Music Association proudly presents the 10th Annual Rhythm of Gospel Awards Weekend. Hosted by Michelle Prather and your brother in Christ, Jamal Bates. Honoring Dr. Teresa Harrison, Pastor Rudolph Stanfield, B. Michael McKay, and National Recording Artist, Kirk Hawk. With special performances by Apostle James Austin and Fellowship, Kara Nicole, K. Morris, Lady T, C. Ashley Brown Lawrence. Come on, clap your hands. Frozen Lot Hayes, Malcolm Williams, and Great Faith. Is anybody grateful that he died for you? St. John Divine Praise Dancers, Marquise Williams, B. Chase Williams, and Shabbat. Todd Curry, Carl Hearn and Priesthood, Dr. E. LaQuaint Weaver, and the Hallelujah Singers, and the Kurgimon Community Choir. For more information and tickets, log on to drhythmofgospelawards.com or dial 210-745-5858, extension 102. You don't want to miss it. This is a celebration, a celebration of a people, our people, and of the contributions we've made through captivity, racism, discrimination, we've risen. And though those elements are still prevalent today, we still rise. Brothers and sisters, we can't. Let hardship from the past leave us laying dormant among the beggars. We come from royalty. Kings, queens, that's right. Educators, scientists, inventors pioneering and engineering products that our society couldn't live without today. From the railroad to the traffic light. Our culture is rich. So tell the story to our children. But there is more to black people than how well we sing, dance, and play basketball. Tell them they're African American and teach them the contributions we've made so we can celebrate. Through our tears, we celebrate. Through our battle, we celebrate. By any means necessary, oh, we celebrate. So, brothers and sisters, stand up on your feet, clap your hands. Celebration time!
This is Lady T, urban gospel artist from Jackson, Mississippi. You're listening to Positive Power, Double XI Christian Radio on Spreaker Radio and Facebook Live. So keep it locked. Hi, this is Chanel from Let's Talk Talk Show and Elations Radio. And you're listening to The Christian Party Line on Friday nights with Jerry Royce Live. Welcome back. Welcome back. You are with your host, Shay Samuels, and we are here at the Jerry Voice Live, the Christian Party Line on Positive Power 21 Christian Radio. And boy, do we have a topic for you. We started the conversation off with why women are dating outside of the church, and now we're going to flip the script and we're going to talk about the men. First, let me say, join the members of the Next Man Up Live. That is an awesome, awesome show. Shout out to the man, the Next Man Up um, Men's Weekly Summit at 10 a.m. Join them tomorrow with moderator Paul Kelly and panelist Minister John E. Roth, my boy and apostle Thomas Morrison. The topic for them tomorrow will be successful spiritual leadership within Ron uh, Jefferson. Let me tell you, mm-hmm. you guys are not going to get anything but powerful conversation and topics on these shows. I mean, yeah. I listen to a lot of radio. Well, I shouldn't say that. I listen to a lot of Jerry radio. <laughs> I listen to a lot of positive power. Because, you know, what, what other station can you go to and you get podcast hosts who are talking, you know, men, next men up. You're getting Paula G. You're getting Joyce. You're getting Jerry. You're getting Shea Samuels, Patrice, Chanel. You know what I'm saying? Independent artists who are, who are really aspiring to do more than just music. They are doing the work of the Lord and giving tidbits on, like you said, transparency. Where else are we going to get this? Absolutely. Amen? Amen. Mm-hmm. Where else are we going to get this? So uh, shout out again to Jerry Voice for doing his thing. Um, Jerry Voice Live Worldwide. Y'all just be on the lookout for more to come. And I know that there's um, the movie, The um, what is it called, Who I Am, the movie? Mm-hmm. Oh my Ooh, goodness! Mm-hmm. This, and Dirty <laughs> Diane. Who yeah. I am, the movie. Yes, and Dirty Diane. It's, Jerry works hard, and I'm not just saying yeah. this because I'm on the show. But Jerry works really, really hard, and I mean, he is pushing something out new, birthing something out. Men birth too, ladies. And he's birthing something out new. Um, shout out to his wife. He, he, <laughs> but shout out to his wife who has to deal with the in and out of new ideas every day. And really all she wants to do is go to Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> she just wants to go to Walmart. That's where all Jerry's ideas come from, sitting at Walmart waiting for his wife. Amen. All right, so we are back. Thank you again for joining. If you are on Facebook Live, we want to hear your responses. Why are we dating outside the church when there are so many powerful men and women of God in the church? Um, And I'm going to ask that question um, to Patrice for the men. Why do we think men are dating outside the church? I have heard so many times church women are crazy. Have you heard that before? I have heard that before, unfortunately. (laughs) I've heard that church women are crazier than just women, women who are out there in the world. And so um, why do you think that is, Patrice? Um, I I mean, I would think that a good part of that would be the fact that, you know, when you date a woman – well, I don't say when you date a woman that's Christian, but sometimes Christian women, they have this idea of what they want their man to be, which is, is you, you should know what you want before you go into a relationship, you know, what type of man you want, the quality you want him to have. But I think sometimes the women may um, compare their man or what type of man they want according to who their pastor is maybe, or they want him to be, or they want their men to be saved and sanctified and have good credit and be fine and can cook and fix your car and do all these things, but they're not really ready either, right? And I think sometimes they think just because they're if it's a Christian man that they should have all these things, but they need to be worked on as well or let, allow God yeah. to work on them as well. I have seen that. Um, and so I think men can be intimidated, either intimidated by that or they don't want to deal with that. They And then a lot of times, you know, women in church may 
be serving in the church and be serving more at, at church than they are at home. You know, but yeah. if you have a woman yeah. who maybe goes to church every once in a while um, or does have a relationship with God, you may not have to compare. You may, no, we're not compare, but you may have to compete with them serving in the church yeah. as well. So yeah. that, I think that might be key to it, you know, that I've seen in my in my experience. I also think it has to do with the stereotype, too. Just because we are in church, there's an expectation on us. And so men are, and I don't know why we're held to that expectation because we are human as well. So you might have a woman who reads the word, you know, praying all day, every day, um, and starts speaking in tongues at you when you do something wrong. You know, so now tongues is used, or the word speaking in the spirit is used as a punishment as opposed to, you know, um, the, the, the what it's supposed to be empowered for. Um, but I think we, we have a tendency to, if I must say, and Paul, I'm going to send this question over to you next, but if we, we do have a tendency as women at times, and we're going to ask the woman of wisdom, but, you know, this generation of believers, I do notice that, um, you know, church has become a fad, whereas when I was growing up, it was, it was what we did. It was traditional, but it wasn't as much of a, of a fad as it was now. I've heard, I've heard women say that they go to church just to find a husband. And, and to yeah, some men, that, that would be crazy. Time. Yeah. To some, to some men, that would be crazy. They're in the church and they're scouting out men um, because they feel that that's where they're going to find a good man. Um, so anyway, with that being said, so the generation of women that are growing in the church now, it's a fact. We, you know, I'm not going to say we, but I'm putting us all in one. We all, we rise together, we fall together, we fall together, we rise together, but we want to make each other better. But coming to church on a Sunday has to do with the way you wear your hat, the gloves that you have on, the outfit that you have on. Women are wearing tighter clothes. Do you notice that? Do you notice that in the church now? where Mm -hmm. the clothes are tighter, the skirts are shorter, cleavage is hanging out. You know, I was on praise and worship, and I would be scared to make people jump because I wasn't sure what was going (laughs) to pop out while I was doing praise and worship. Not me. scared to make them jump. You scared? I'm scared to make them. I'm a mover when I worship, and I and you know, and I scout that out because I, I'm aware that you know etiquette, even for etiquette, you know, it goes back to the mothers of the church. Mothers taught us this stuff. You know, um, elders, the elders in the church, they taught us mm-hmm. what to wear. We were afraid to do that kind of stuff or wear that kind of stuff back in the day. So now these women are coming in, and let's just say, you know, they come in and and they're enticing the men. They want they want a man who's a believer. Um, they want a guy a guy whose heart a man whose heart follows after Christ. But then you come in dressed like the world. But we're well, talking a little bit about what that might have been. Like. getters, attention getters at all costs. Yes, and yes. Mm-hmm. And so that goes back to why, why why would the why would the men date within the body of Christ when the women are coming in as the world anyway? Paul, can you help us with that? Re- repeat your question one more time. I'm sorry, my audio went out for a minute there. That's okay. Why would we? Why would the men want to date the women in the church when we're coming in as the world anyway? With the way that we dress, the way that we act, why would they want to date us uh, um, inside the church when we come in dressed as the world or our attitudes are as the world anyway? You know, I I, I think it goes. It, it speaks to you know he that findeth a wife findeth a good mm. thing, and. You know, I believe that you have two different classifications, let's say, of men. You, you, Men are visual of, you know, that's how God made them, they're visual. You have those that are visual, and that's their main focus, no pun intended. But then you have those who are looking beyond the physical, they're thinking beyond the physical. They're thinking life partner. They're thinking mother of my children. They're thinking uh, partner by my side. They're thinking whatever position it is that they may hold, if it's some sort of corporate position, even if it's a, if it's a rank in the military, they're thinking this person is going to be by my side. So those women that may be coming into the church 
dressing in a revealing fashion because they did not have or do not have the benefit that we have. And I think, Shay, you said something so important. We were taught we wouldn't dream of going to come to church <laughs> looking like and expect to live beyond the service. You know, you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and expect to, live, to even get out of the house. You know, so I, I think that also speaks to a lot of these women are not being taught for whatever reason. Some, some just may not know. But, you know, with, with a lot of them coming into the church, depending on the mindset of the man, whether he's, you know, he's, his focus is the visual or his focus is beyond the visual. You know, his focus is, you know, what is this going to look like years down the, down the road really determines whom, whom he seeks, you know, and, and, and what type of, 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 of woman that he's speaking, you know, um, yeah, yeah. So I think, and again, you know, I, I go back to what I said earlier. You know, we uh, I'm a strong believer in the body of Christ and going to church on a regular basis, attending church and Sunday school and so forth. But also at the end of the day, it's not the re- so much the religion as it is the relationship. Because, you know, sometimes you may have men or women that are outside of the church that have a relationship with God and may know the Bible backwards and forwards better than those sitting in church. But for for whatever reason, they do not necessarily attend church on a daily, on a, on a regular basis. So while there is an element outside the church that is not of God, there, there's also an element, element outside of the church that are of God, but for whatever reason... Yeah that they may have, they don't attend church, you know, on, on a regular basis. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And I, yeah. I believe, too, we're, we're going to go to another song, but I do believe that um, the topic is in itself, the topic in itself provides an avenue for us to identify um, the body overall. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's not just about, like you said, the religion, it's about the relationship. And I think when we can change ourselves from the inside out, we start seeing things the way that God sees them. We start seeing ourselves the way God sees us. And then we start understanding why God put us either in the church that we're in, but also with the mates that we're with. Um, It's not hard to find a man or woman of God within the body of Christ. I think it's more like you said earlier, the mindset. What are we looking Mm -hmm. for? Um, I'm going to use this example, and I'll use another one when we come back. I'm going to use this example of... um, a friend of mine who actually moved from one state to another. And when she moved to the other state, she started to find herself dealing with the same men that she was dealing with. And this is outside the church, but the same men she mm. dealt with in one state, she dealt with in another state. And she asked me, she said, why am I finding the same men? Why am I dealing with the same men? I'm in a whole other state. I've moved to a whole other state, but I'm finding that I'm, I'm reaching the same men. And it really boils down to the mindset. Once we get once we tap into the mindset of Christ, men and women, once we tap into the full mindset of Christ, we'll understand our worth. And that's what that's all about. Sometimes we can be in a position where we do date a man outside or a woman outside the church, but our job or our assignment is to bring them into the church. And if we miss that and we get to a point where, again, that company corrupts good seed, that we begin to become corrupted by their world instead of bringing them into our world, then that becomes the problem. So um, so we'll go to another song, but we'll come back with that because everything that we said, it all encompasses everything that we're trying to say, trying to say that it, it begins with the mindset. So once we begin to have the mindset of Christ, and I'll have that scripture together for you when we, when we come back, but once we come together and we have the mindset of Christ, those things will change. The way that we see our men or the women of Christ in the body of the church, we, we, it begins to change, even outside of that. So we're going to go to another mm-hmm. song. When we come back, we're going to wrap up. Um, but this is an awesome conversation. It is an awesome discussion yeah. to be had, and I pray that somebody's delivered from it tonight. So we're going to go to another song, and we'll be right back after this song. You are listening to Jerry Wars Live Worldwide Podcast. Oh, 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 oh,
Worldwide Podcast. Hey, it's your girl Patrice Jackson, aka Miss Savvy Pro, and you're listening to the Christian Party Line Friday nights on Jerry Royce Live. Welcome back, welcome. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. It's me, your girl, Shay Samuels, and I am on Christian Party Line with my girl, Patrice, and my sister, Paula G., and we want to give another birthday shout-out to Miss, I, I call her Pastor Chanel, but we're going to say Pastor Chanel tonight, if you are listening still. Happy birthday. Um, we had an awesome discussion tonight, dating in the church. We started off with the women, and we ended off with the men. And um, I thank God for this conversation tonight, ladies. What do you think? It was awesome. It was an amazing, awesome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. And thank, thank was, y'all. It's amazing. Thank, thank you all for allowing G Mommy to hang with you tonight. <laughs> oh, we we you know what we had the woman of wisdom on with us tonight, so. <laughs> it was an honor to have you on here tonight. I, I, this was Thank probably you. one of the conversations we would we would love to have had you on. So it was an honor for us to have you on with us tonight. But you know, I'm thankful because I, I, I my prayer is that people who are listening to this tonight, mm-hmm. you know, whoever you are, woman or man, um, you know, you're 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 if you're in that position of being single and you're trying to figure out what dating looks like. Women, don't be so pompous in the church that you scare the men or you intimidate them. Understand mm-hmm. what being meek and being kind um, looks like. Yeah. And, you know, um, understand, it. you know, it, we get to that point where we talked about the clothes and somebody probably, I can feel somebody saying, you can't tell me what to wear in church. But, you know, you can't think, of, you got to think about that stuff because here you are mm-hmm. feeling like disrespected in the, in the body of Christ. But you may not be presenting yourself well for that husband that God has called you for. Well, if I call them, he'll accept my, my dress. You know, he'll accept the way I dress. So we have those women in the church. And then we have those men who are still in the church but may not be mature enough to understand what the he who finds the wife finds a good thing and finds favor in the Lord. They stick to the scripture that the wife must be submissive. So they're looking for someone to be submitted to making their dinner and all of that. So let's get it together, people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Let's get it together. Let's get it together. Um, but you know, let, let, let me just add, let me just add to that real, real quickly, ladies. We 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 have the gift. We have the gift. Mm-hmm. It's how mm-hmm. we use the gift. Our words. How we use the, our words. How we we everything doesn't have to be hanging out. We can dress modestly and look just as attractive as if we dress more revealing, which we don't have to do. But my point is... We don't have to. We don't have to. We just got to be still and know how to use what God has given us. And I'm not talking about physical. Knowing how to use our words, and just what you were speaking to earlier, is knowing how to edify that, you know, knowing how to edify that man and not tear him down. You know, know, knowing when to speak and when when not to speak. I know some of my sisters might be saying, you know, you can't tell me when to speak and when, you know, can't tell me how to dress or how not to dress. Can't tell me when to speak or when not to dress. Okay, you are absolutely right. Can't tell you how to speak. Can't tell <laughs> that, you how to speak. That, you are that absolutely is our problem. Right. But, don't, but, but let and us not complain. Problem. Let us not complain yes. when we don't have that mate. If you, if you... You play your cards right. I'm just going to keep it. You play your yeah. cards right, you can get that man to walk on fire for you if you play your Come cards on. right. But you got to know how to play your cards. And I'm going to be quiet for the rest of it. <laughs> I receive it. You receive it, but yeah. I receive it. Got to know how to play your cards. <laughs> Great wisdom Amen. for Miss well, Apology. Yes, yes, I appreciate it. I mean, again, you bless me. I know that you bless the other women, and I'm sure that you bless anyone listening tonight. But I'm going to read this up. Before we wrap up tonight, I'm going to read this scripture for all of my women because we started off, and um, one of my friends kept saying, well, you know, your your ministry is empowering women. Don't talk about the men. But, you know, we couldn't help. I couldn't help it because it's not a one-sided thing. It's just, it, it happens to both women, women and men in the church. But let me read this. Proverbs 31 who can find a who can find a virtuous and capable wife? She is more precious than rubies. Her husband can trust her, and she will greatly enrich his life. She brings him good, not harm, 
all the days of her life. And so I want to leave you with that. Proverbs 31, you can read the rest of your on your own. But God talks about a virtuous woman. And we do have to get back to that, what virtuous women look like. And, um, and I think it will make the world a better place. Amen. All right. Amen. Well, that is, I am Shay Samuels, and I'm here with Miss Paula G., the woman of wisdom on the line tonight, and Miss Patrice. Again, happy birthday to Chanel, who's out celebrating in Atlanta, GA. And you happy are birthday, listening Chanel. to the Christian. <laughs> happy birthday, Chanel. You could, I don't know that we can all do it in harmony, but that would be, that would be awesome. <laughs> We're not going to push our luck. <laughs> We're not going to push our luck on this one, but you are listening to the Christian Party Line with Shay Samuels, uh, Chanel's off the line, Patrice Jackson, and Miss Paula G. Uh, Boyce. And shout out to Jerry Voice Live. This was an awesome show. And we yeah. will see you back here next Friday, 12 a.m. to 1 p.m. And if the conversation is good, we make it a little bit longer. Thank you for joining us tonight. You all have a wonderful morning. Peace and blessings. Bye bye, everybody. You're Bye. listening to Jerry Voice Live Worldwide Podcast. All right, family, you just finished hearing the Christian party line with Shea Samuels, Paula G., Patrice Jackson, and Chanel Lloyd. Please tune in every Friday starting at 12.15 right after Jerry Voice Live Worldwide Late Night with Paula G. That's right, 11.30 on Fridays. Don't forget to tune in at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. No, starting at 9 with Pastor Jack. We're running reruns of Pastor Jack and then follow up at 10 o'clock. Next man up with my man. That's right, my main man, Dr. Paul Kelly. And we got special panelists, so come out and join us. We're going to have a great time talking among the men how to rebuild our communities and keep our kids (laughs) <laughs> out of jail <laughs> all right everybody have a great night and we will see you in the morning i'm jerry Royce live worldwide positive power double xi you are listening to jerry Royce live worldwide podcast Listen, Shay, got plenty of reasons Because they come a dime a dozen He died for me, so it's God I'm loving And it's that Holy Spirit in me That's keeping this whole world buzzing Believing in the cross life So it's no more thug It's living proof in this proof That he raised the dead Not only that gave me a spot Where I can rest my head That was healing in the scriptures And it kept me fed You can believe what you want My God ain't dead Let's go Who are you to tell me That my kids won't go to church And the streets will get them And strip them from their worth I got a reason to praise him Well, I got a reason to praise him Lord, we're here. 
draws near And I got a reason to praise Him Listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast.